My name is Herbie Barnes and I am currently the Artistic Director at Young People's Theatre here in Toronto. I am also uh, the Director of Russell's World and I am also the Playwright. Wonderful, thank you so much for meeting with us today. Uh, why don't I start by asking you what was the uh, inspiration for Russell's World? Um, the inspiration came from really two images that are in the play. One was of a child rushing home, finding a safe place. So a chair jammed under a door with a child in a hooded jacket and saying to, saying safe. That was one image that I started the whole play on. The other was an image that I stole from a performer. I, I literally saw a performer do this and I loved it so much that it had to be in the play. Was of this empty jacket giving the child a hug. Those two images were the basis for what Russell's World is based on. But the play is also sort of really based on my childhood. I was usually the first kid up in my neighborhood and um, was, you know, asked to go outside really early and I looked for friends and when they weren't out there, I created my own adventures as a child um, growing up. So it's, it's basically my story. In a few sentences, tell me uh, what, what Russell's World is about. What do you think Russell's World is about? In a few sentences, I think it's about using your imagination to survive. Um, Growing up, I think that that was, for me, the period between 8 and 10 a.m. in the morning before my friends came out. I was usually the first kid up and out of the house, and I used my imagination in those times to kill those two hours. But it's also using that two hours where I was... Um, it's also that time that, that I was aware of kids who were bullied. I knew those kids who were bullied. Um, I wish I could say that I wasn't uh, a bully, but I think that there were times where I was, and I'm aware of that. So uh, I think it's that. There were certain kids growing up that I recognized that we that were picked on, that were awkward, that were weird, that we 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 totally picked on um, and I think that that's what Russell is especially the new kid I grew up near an army base and you know army kids had to follow the uh, parents who were every two years had to be moved so they were constantly these awkward people who had to make new friends and we were aware of all of those coming in so there's all of that involved in Russell's world. You mentioned that you're artistic director of Young People's Theatre. Mm -hmm. Why this play? Why now? It's a great question. Uh, one of the reasons why we chose this play right now is because um, we've just gone through two years of the pandemic. Um, our young people have been, uh, if not locked away behind masks and kept apart and kept at distance. They have been at home doing online schooling. And I think that's two years of, um, I think it's two years of, of learning how to have relations with, with people, how to be close to people, making friendships and all of that that has been stilted and held back because of this pandemic. They've been, um, they've been denied those opportunities. Uh, I think about those years, and I think about young people from the age of seven, who I think of, I, I think of young people from the age of, of five to 10 years old and how important having to be around people at that age, learning how to, how to deal with other people, how to communicate with other people. It's so important at that time. Um, and they've been denied that for two years. 
So that creates uh, that moment. And, and that's what Russell is kind of dealing with in a short little window because he's been moved away from his community. That's that kind of thing. So again, it's about the loneliness. It's about the um, adapting to a new environment. When we think about our grade ones or twos, they have never been in a classroom, full day classroom, without having a mask on. When we think about our kindergartens who are going into, or, or grade ones, they have never been in a classroom with another student without having a mask on because the first two years of their schooling has been with a mask on if they've been in school at all. So it, it, it's, it's, it's that, it's that knowing that, uh, it, it's the indicating that they're not alone or isolated, that there are other people that are dealing with that same thing and um, giving them um, a tool to deal with that isolation. Russell's world has live puppets. Why did you want to work with puppetry in the age of technology? There is, when puppetry is done correctly, there is a, there is a magic, there's a magic that happens in theater that you can't capture in film. Because young people know that it's film and they go that's a special effect and they did that through lights and sounds and computers now and and all of that the beauty of puppetry is that they'll forever try and figure out really good puppetry really good puppetry makes them question technically how do you do that there's moments in this play that I'm really excited about in this one that that weren't in the other one and there's moments in the other one that weren't in this one but there's moments in, the, in this play where you can't tell where the puppet is transferred from one puppet to another from one puppeteer to another there's moments and and um, years ago there was conversation about turning this uh, to, to taking this to um, film and, and actually animation. Um, and I rejected it on the grounds of the magic is gone from what this play piece is. Um, when you have to use your imagination to create that world, making your jacket come alive or to, or to have a teddy bear that you can have a conversation with, it's different when it's on film. We've seen movies like Ted which brings a teddy bear alive and it's it's great animation but it's not puppetry uh, and I think that that's why puppetry in this time yeah I mean I also grew up in a time when uh, great puppetry was being done by Jim Henson and the Muppets and all of that sort of stuff uh, and that was brilliant so I was hooked by that Okay, so this was um, written for stage, um, but it is being filmed. It is being filmed. So has anything changed in order for it to be filmed? And how does the magic stay alive still through film? So one of the things that we totally did early on in the conversation with the performers and, and in my mind was that I am still looking at ways, even though we're not doing this, my thought is after we get this all done on film, we can turn around the next day, take it out to a gymnasium and do it live. So there is no trick that I can think of as I sit here right now where we're going, we'll stop the camera here and then we'll move this to go here and then we can capture it. We're hiding the puppeteers, we're um, manipulating situations so that it can all be hidden, so that literally, and I said this to the performers today after rehearsal, come Wednesday we can go out on tour. And we can do this in a gymnasium and that the we can have a live audience sit through this and go, how did they do that? So the magic is still there, the puppeteering magic. The only difference is, 
is that you'll be able to watch this puppet show, this live show from several different seats. Three cameras, one, two, three, and a wandering camera that we can zoom in on. So we can, mm. so it's, it's just that. But it, there is no special effects. There is no special effects. It is a theater show. The performers know they're doing a theater show. Um, we're shooting it like a theater show. We're rehearsing it like a theater show that, so that um, puppeteers are contorting themselves into the set in order to make the puppeteering work. Hmm. I guess this is my last question, um, unless there's something you'd like to share that I haven't asked. But um, what do you want you know, as a writer, as a director, as an educator, um, what do you hope that children take away from watching Russell's World? Or, I guess this is two questions. What do you hope children take away from Russell's World? And what would you like them to be thinking about after seeing the play? Or after seeing the film version of the play? I think a major thing is that they should not feel alone, that no matter how isolated they are, that they have their imagination to, to run them through and also that they're um, not the only child who uses that imagination to survive. Um, and I think that, uh, I think to take away, I think it's just that, uh, your imagination is a wonderful tool to help you get through hard times, to overcome any obstacle that's in the way, that those are not um, stopping points, that those are just um, zigzags on the road of life, that those are something that is um, fun to overcome, to try and figure out. It's a puzzle rather than a wall. Wonderful. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you.